Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today I have another episode of This Week in EDM, where I go over songs that I found and or want to talk about this week in EDM, songs that came out for the week of July 15th, 15, July 19th to 25th of 2021. So let's get into it. There are 21 songs, I believe, here, and they're ordered from worst to best. There are now... Uh, yeah, four categories. We've got bad, meh, good, and standout tracks. So it's going to go from worst to best. But uh, also, another thing to note, uh, all these songs are now on a Spotify playlist. You can go in the link below to see all of these songs. So you can go and quickly check them out. Uh, also, all the past songs that have ever been in This Week in EDM are there. Also, for best Spotify, uh, go and sort by that the most added song is recent. So that way, it's an ordered list from top to bottom of best to worst each time. Um, but yeah, so uh, here we go. Song number one is Ring the Alarm by DJ Snake and Mala. For a song that chants, uh, turn off the radio, turn off the bullshit, the song uh, has got to hold its own ground, if it's going to say that, and at least be half decent. And it was not. Uh, and also, how tone deaf do you have to be to say turn off the radio over and over again when you literally make radio friendly music? It's like DJ Snake is trying to play both sides of the coin here and uh, it just it just sucked. So that's why it's there. Up next in the bad category is sadly Passion Fruit by Aaron Richards and Mr. Fiji Ouija. Aaron Richards uh, continues his spree of covers with various artists doing Drake's Passion Fruit this time with Fiji. And sadly, I think this is the weakest of all the collaboration covers. Um, I love Fiji to death, but the mechanized, or mechanized, mechanic, mechan yeah, is that the right word? Mechanized bass hits, they kind of sound like gritty a little bit and like mechanical, uh, weren't really doing it for me this time around. And the track felt uh, a bit messy and really just unneeded, like Passion Fruit came out. Five years ago? Four years ago? Up next, we have the first song of the meh category. Songs I think are just meh, meh, or neutral. We've got Brazilian Love Song by Keys in Crates. Uh, so I don't know the slightest thing about Brazilian music, but this definitely didn't sound like a love song to me, so I don't really understand the title. But the uh, traffic track itself felt like a basic trap track with some reggaeton influence. Uh, it was uh, a fairly quick and basic song, so it really was not for me. Up next, we have Clears, the Jaws remix by uh, Hayes, featuring Tian uh, originally. Uh, I think there is a time and place for songs like this that I would thoroughly uh, enjoy uh, to listen to this track in. Uh, but right now, for me, in the setting of just being in my house listening to the song, uh, it just felt like a snooze fest. Even at a festival or club, I don't know if I would have liked this that much. Uh, the melody line was super repetitive and just not engaging. Uh, the whole thing just felt uninspired and useless. Up next, No Stoppin' by Dirty Audio featuring Gold. Uh, this sounds a lot like every other hype trap song with a rapper over top of it. So if you like that style of music and that gets you going, listen to this. And myself, I do personally listen to that style quite a bit. But uh, it was just a decent track, I think, for the most part. There isn't anything really interesting about it one way or another. Up next, we have There and Back by Protostar. Uh, okay, I get what Proto was trying to do with this song, but it didn't really land super well for me. Uh, the track felt really empty with its pre-drop sections, and I found those vocal chops to be quite annoying. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't a hit for me. Up next, we have Monster by Zoo and John the Blind. Uh, I'm very surprised how light and peaceful this track is, considering it's a Zoo song. Like, it doesn't really do this style ever, and it's also not even house. It's a drum and bass style track, so it's like, what the heck? It's just so random for Zoo. Uh, that being said, I thought it was uh, just an average song. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see Zoo branch out a little bit more and do some other style of stuff, uh, but this one just uh, didn't land for me. Up next, we have Mental State by Fool. Uh, this is the point in Fool's discography for myself personally, where uh, I'm starting to prefer the more dynamic in-your-face style Fool tracks rather than this synthwave-inspired things. I, I feel like I've heard this style or this take on a song by Fool just over and over and over again from him recently, and I'm not loving it. Uh, which is interesting to say, though, because it is the first time he's ever done drum and bass on Monster Cat. But to me, even though it is drum and bass, it doesn't sound like anything different than he would have done with his, like, Electro House or, like, yeah. It just all sounds, like, synthwave-esque. And that's just it. And I'm just 
yeah, I just need something with a little more kick. Let's say it that way. Up next, we have In My Head by Bensley, uh, the song to come out on the Cascade EP, I believe it's called. Uh, this is a solid drum and bass track from Bensley, but it sounds very similar to most D&B out there. I prefer when he does some more unique sounding tones, uh, found in tracks like All Night and Vex, uh, but that isn't to say that it isn't bad, I just think this style of track is a little bit overproduced. And there's a lot of drum and bass this week, and so it just felt like another one of those. Up next, we have Holy Ghosts by Elefante. Uh, I haven't actually listened to Elefante in quite some time, but this is a Deep House style track with a strong emphasis on the vocals. I believe this is the second single from an upcoming album, it seems to be, on Spotify, the way it is uh, programmed. Uh, and uh, I didn't really find the track too impressive or interesting, and actually found it to be quite derivative of Deep slash Tropical House uh, just as a whole. Up next, the 10th song of the week is Signs by Party Peoples and Mark E. Bassey. This is a quick and funky little pop track meant for the radio and radio plays. So the role, uh, or the role that the song plays and how it's executed, I mean, it worked, it did its job, it's for radio stuff. But in terms of just how it is as a song, it just was pretty average. Uh, the lyrics are playful and fun though, and uh, yeah, I guess that's the only really 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 cool or interesting thing about this track up next we have we not done by memba and stush uh, memba has been pushing out a ton of music with the phase projects the three series of phase eps uh, and i think the song is actually a testament to that the fact that they're not done making music they're saying we not done making music right now uh, and so this is also their 10th collaboration in a row because all the phase songs are collaboration so that's just crazy. Uh, well, I don't think the song is awful. I do think it's the worst of those 10 songs, or I guess the phase EPs and then this one included. It doesn't really have a unique tone to it other than being just another hype trap song. Up next, we're moving into the good category songs I thought were at least good for anyone listening. We've got Fox Gloves by Former Hero. Uh, Former Hero is here with the debut album single number two. It's another track I am all for. While I did enjoy uh, Hell Velen a little bit more than this one, it's still a good cut with a unique future bass sound uh, that perfectly uh, slots into Bitbird as well. Uh, I enjoyed the quite driven beat with strong melody line, but thought the repetition of the word Fox Gloves over and over again was maybe a bit too much for my liking. Up next, we have Debauer, I believe you say, Debauer, uh, by Drinks On Me. Uh, I was definitely a fan of the new Drinks On Me EP, Rise and Fall, and while this track wasn't my favorite from the list, it's still a solid garage track with stellar production quality. Uh, I'm a sucker for chill out or garage style music, especially stuff that Drinks On Me produces, and so uh, the whole thing was just a big hit for me, the whole EP. Up next, we have Daily Routine by Grizz, Big Gigantic, and Prob Cuz. Uh, I have always loved Grizz and Big Gigantic collaborations, but I know that they will never surpass what they did on Good Times Roll. Uh, I do really enjoy their mix of funky electric guitar, hard-hitting bass, and the brass sounds. Uh, this only comes, uh, or this this one did come out with, I think, the whole album, the Grizz, some, I can't remember the name of it, uh, but I still need to go review and listen to that album, obviously, because I have no idea what I'm talking about in terms of the album. Uh, but yeah, so that'll be for later to go back, and it will be on my album of the year profile eventually at the end of the year. Uh, number five song this week is Hurt Me Too by Bishu featuring McCall. Uh, Bishu has uh, been quite the mainstay in the Monster Cat Instinct world as of late, pumping out good tracks after another, and you know this is just another one of those solid tracks. Uh, well, short for the most part, I did like McCall's vocal performances, especially with what Bishu did to it on the drops and how it blends into the melody, melody line so well. That was Heard on Me. Up next is Resonance by Ahuban and Kocho. Uh, I did not expect to like the song as much as I did. Uh, as a basic Canadian white guy, I have absolutely no idea what the song is about or what they are saying, but the production quality is incredible and I found myself just engulfed in the feeling of the song. I love the movements that the song took and the almost six minute runtime was just, ooh, I loved it. It was also a semi gritty D&B track with uh, just a great atmosphere. So that was a uh, big fan. Our bronze song of the week is Electric Lady by Barely Alive, uh, Nipetain and Exo Eliza. Eliza? Wow, that's, that's bad. Uh, wow, as of recording this, I have only listened to this song of the EP, but whoo, this 
if this whole EP is going to be like this song, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, it's one of the finer mellowed up songs I've heard in quite some time. It's a great mix of heaviness, melody, clean vocals, the digital sounds, just the nines. Uh, if the whole EP is like this, this might top my end of the year list. So I'm super excited to go and actually listen to that after this. And our runner-up song of the week is Stay With Me by Haywire featuring 610. Uh, this was another solid Haywire cut. I'm super excited to see him back and producing a lot more music as of late. We've had this and Wisdom. And while I liked Wisdom a little bit better than this track, the drop sections were major highlights for me. And I just love the new kind of lower grittiness he's taking to his new tracks where he's going for those heavy bass lines and deep vocals. And our number one song of the week. I also forgot to mention the last one was also a standout song. So this is a, another standout song. So two songs I think were absolute standouts for this week. Uh, this is Lifetime by Swedish House Mafia featuring Ty Dolla Sign and 070 Shake. Swedish House Mafia is reasserting themselves into the music landscape uh, with their first couple tracks in nine years. And uh, having given some time, I think Lifetime is actually better than the two tracks. I think that's largely in part to the features on this one. They add a lot to the tonality and experience of the track without being too over the top. And I'm insanely pumped for what will technically be the debut Swedish House Mafia album. So that has been it. That has been this week in EDM. Let me know what you guys think of these songs in the comment section below. And again, that Spotify playlist will be there for you to go and listen to all of the songs that I've ever done in this week in EDM. And remember to or and sort by date added at the top. But uh, yeah, I've been Bowtie Media and I will see you guys in another video.